When Creality reached out and asked me to make a video about their Falcon 2 laser engraver stroke cutter, my immediate thoughts were, I don't know anything about laser engravers. How do I make a video? The only laser I know about is this. Or maybe even this. But after contemplating the idea for a while, I thought that if I could make a video that would guide others that had limited knowledge also, then maybe it was worth a shot. The Small Barn Workshop is all about woodworking, so I will be using timber as my medium and will be leaving metals, plastics and levers to others. The questions to myself were, can I learn the basics in a short period of time? I set myself four evenings or about eight hours. Can I make the laser work for my small workshop? And can I do it without burning the workshop down? We actually are on fire. The Creality Falcon 2 is very well packaged. It has everything you need to get you going inside the box, including a few samples of thin birch plywood. The most notable parts are the air assist pump, the power brake and of course the laser head. Also there's a series of feet to level and raise the main unit. Underneath all the packaging there is the main unit and the main thing to note is it's pretty much all put together for you. On the front there is a series of buttons which include the start stop pause button and the frame button. On the top there is an emergency stop as well as a lockout key. The right hand corner has the input from the power bank, the on off button and also the computer connection points. And the left hand corner has the air assist controls. There isn't many steps to complete the build of the machine. You screw the legs in to one of three positions to match the size of your desk and also wind the feet down to make sure the unit is level. Connect the air assist pump by removing the bung off the top and pushing on the pipe that's already connected to the main unit into the top of the pump. The pump has sprung feet to minimise vibration and then the pump plugs into the control on the front left hand corner. The next task is to fit the laser head, which is very well packaged. There's the laser there. The laser head slots into a dovetail groove at the back of the main unit, and it doesn't need tightening too tight because it's designed to move, which you'll see later in this video. The other end of the air pump assist also needs to be plugged in to the laser head. Creality also sent me this honeycomb cutting bed which is an optional extra. Little space block is very important. Focusing the laser on the piece. So once you get your piece in, you've got to set the height of the laser on that little block. So it's quite an important piece. I've got it set up. I wanted to get to this stage. I'm gonna go and read the instructions and just do a little bit more research. I just wanted to see the unit and actually get to the instructions that I knew was inside the packaging. So my camera tells me so far we've been doing this for 25 minutes, including messing around with the cameras to unbox it and to set it up. And I think it's ready to go other than to actually plug it in and turn it on. I'm gonna go and read this. I'm gonna go and read this. And I'm going to go and stick this little memory card, which has got further instructions on, in my computer and read all that. So once I've done that, I'll come back and be more informed. There is a lot of information stored on the memory card that comes with the Falcon 2. These are more in-depth instructions, instructional videos, and also some guides on cutting speeds and laser power outputs. More on that later. Now there's no getting away from the use of computers with these kind of machines. That's how they are operated. Probably the first lesson is the term G-code. The G-code is a command or a small program that informs the laser what to do. There are a few pieces of software, some free, some not, that can control the laser. And probably the most popular one is one called Lightburn. Now the software is quite intuitive. Within five minutes of installing the software, I'd made this simple design. To learn how to use it properly, 
go over to this YouTube channel, Asher's DIY, and watch some of JG's instructional videos. Okay, so I think I'm here for a session. I've got a cup of tea, I've got my laptop. And the first thing I did on day two was to update the firmware on the laser and also the main circuit. This was really easy to do. There are well structured instructions on Creality's website. Just a case of transferring the information onto a memory card, inserting it and turning on the laser until the lights go green. I've got my G code on my card. I've got some of my plywood at the centre samples, three millimeter birch plywood. Engraving and cutting one to three mil. Set the laser height to that. The laser sit on there. And press frame. Oh, it's moving. So that's where it wants to do it then. Okay. I guess we press play. Let's see. Oh, it's doing it. Well, this is a very easy workshop day. Drinking tea and watching little cure up here. And I will. Look at that. He's still smoking. How cool is that? That's brilliant. I expected it. This dark part here, his cloak and that, had just be darker than the rest, but it's deep, it's burnt through the veneer. I don't know why I weren't expecting that. I was just expecting it to be a charred surface. The way that it cut out the body went, started and went right round, it went round so quick. I was so pleased with how easy it was to create that little character. So for my next design, I thought I would try and engrave stroke cut. The little design I made last night in the Lightburn software. Now really, there is only three things you can control with this laser, and that is the power setting of the laser between zero and 100%, the speed at which the machine moves the laser across the workpiece, and the distance the laser is from the top of the workpiece. All them parameters need to be set correctly to get your desired effect of burn or cut. The Lightburn software controls the speed and the power. The distance is set manually by you with the little spacer block. When cutting, Lightburn can also turn on the air assist, which reduces the charring around the cut edges. On my first attempt of cutting the design, I have it on a relatively low power, but as fast speed. And as you can see, the design is just legible. The Falcon 2 40 watt diode laser can cut thick timber up to around about 22 millimeters. So here with this 18 millimeter timber, I wanted to see whether I could cut this circle out. So experimenting in the Lightburn software, I slowed the feed rate down and increased the laser to 100%. The information that I had inputted into the software was very similar to what the parameters state in the user guidelines. The first attempt didn't quite cut all the way through the timber, which is why there is a piece of timber missing in the top right hand corner. After the first cut, I cut a piece off on the bandsaw to see how far the laser penetrated the timber and it was almost through bar a couple of millimetres. So I had a second go and then a third go tweaking the parameters in the Lightbird software. And as you can see here, I set my workpiece on fire. 40 watts doesn't seem that strong if you compare it to a light bulb, but in the laser world, it turned out to be very, very powerful. Luckily, it didn't end in disaster and it proved to be a very important lesson. But it did cut the circle out. I started day three by making two name tags with the name Gracie, one of my dogs, on them. To save the stocks of my 3mm birch plywood, I cut these from some 10mm tongue and groove board. The first one was too small and I had issue with the letters and the second one I had an issue with a large knot in the middle of the piece. 
But these are design issues and the Falcon 2 cut what I asked it to perfectly. Whilst the Falcon 2 was running its G-codes, I used the time productively to research and to design further projects. And I found that I can use Canva, a piece of software I am familiar in, to design images and then export them into Lightburn, alter the engraving stroke cutting speeds in that software and then send the G-code to the Falcon 2. I also discovered if I use the font style stencil, then the middle of the letters don't fall out during the burning process. And whilst Bo's bone bow tag was cutting itself out on the laser, I used the time to import a picture I had taken of Bo and to turn it into a drinks coaster. To do this, I started with the photo in Canva, removed the background, printed it as a PNG, imported it into Lightburn, changed all the settings in Lightburn so it would engrave and cut, turn it into a G-code and then put it into the Falcon 2. Whoops, this one's not going to plan. It was supposed to cut the circle and outline the bow. It's gone the wrong way around. Programming error, not machine error. I changed the parameters in the G-code and tried again. That's a bit better. It's what I were expecting first time around. Actually, because I made a little bit of a error. Thread this with a ribbon and I've got a bow Christmas tree decoration. And now, after about six hours of use, I start to think I'm getting the hang of this thing. And my next project was my most ambitious, yet a sign that says make dust, drink coffee, with all the letters cut through 18mm softwood. The Falcon 2 is really showing its cutting power here. I programmed the Falcon to cut these letters out in two passes. I didn't want to risk burning like I did with the original cutting attempt. There was just a couple parts of the letters that needed poking out with a pencil. There's no effing coffee. Oh, there we go. Coffee. That one there. That one there. Hey, hey. So. I plan to use this as a backlit sign around the workshop. And now I am on a roll. I just wanted to continue making things, so I thought I'd use the last remaining 3mm birch plywood I had left. And I needed a small bound workshop key logo for my workshop key. I was interested on the size I could cut out while maximising the offcuts I had left. This is my first attempt at cutting 6mm MDF. I had to run the program twice and tinker with the settings between the two operations. I was concerned the laser may scorch the lettering here, but the Falcon 2 did a fantastic job. I also tried to run a very similar program on this 12mm hardwood faced plywood. and I had to change the settings a couple of times before I figured out how much power and the feed rate to get the laser to cut through. I'm especially keen on our MDF and plywood cut because I think it'd be an excellent opportunity to make really precise templates for the workshop. Now there was a couple of things I wanted to do before I finished this video and 
use up all my allotted eight hours. To this point, I had trouble connecting my MacBook directly to the laser, but I just couldn't get mine to work. So I had to go with this old Windows computer and it worked and fired up first time. So I'm not quite sure why my MacBook refuses to play nicely. Since filming this video, I have now got the MacBook to work. It seemed it was a good old fashioned turn it off and turn it back on again. Finally, buried in the depths of the laser burn software are some test programs. And the idea is you run these tests on various materials to confirm the best speed and laser power. I should have run these before on the other materials I was cutting, but I only found out about their existence on about the seventh hour I would like to thank Creality for sending me this Falcon 2 laser. It is a fantastic addition to my workshop and you'll be seeing more of it soon.